Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Happy Mum, Happy Baby, the podcast. Today's guest is a food writer. She's a businesswoman and founder of Deliciously Ella. She's also the mum of two girls, almost four, five and almost four. It's Ella Mills. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. I can remember, I can literally remember the walk I was having with my newborn, with one of my best mates. We were talking about the fact that I'd just become a veggie. I'm not anymore, but back then I was. And she said to me, so we're talking about 10 years ago, she said to me, you need to follow this girl online. She's amazing. And it was you. That but it's so, so funny. funny. You know, I have a clear memory of the first time that I got introduced to one of your recipes. That's so funny. Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. So I always find it really surreal with people who you've been interacting with, like listening to your show. Yeah. And then to know they've been doing that with you. Yeah. It's a really, yeah, I find it very surreal and very meaningful. Yeah. How are you? How is how is life? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Genuinely good. Not not like it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> the gritted teeth, just exactly. slightly rocking. It's yeah. fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'd say it's fine for many years, but I feel like yeah, this year's this year's good. Finding much better balance in life, obviously, like ebbs and flows every single day, yeah. week, month. But generally speaking, I feel a lot calmer and more on top of life than I have done in a it's long really time. Really hard the balance thing, and I think. I would imagine especially doing all the things that you do and juggling all those balls and plates, let's do the whole thing, um, you know, to kind of want to seize the moment and, and build the company and do all of that stuff, but actually also go, but I'm a mum and I need to do that stuff as well. I'm finding that, because you it's you don't want those opportunities to go because you've worked so hard, but at the same time, you've got life in the house that you need to nurture I, I for me I feel like there are moments where I get it right and there are moments where all the plates smash all the balls fall and I'm just like ah this isn't great oh 100% like there's so many balls in there yeah. on any given day um I think I used to be a lot harder on myself about it and on almost I don't think I knew I was striving for perfectionism, but I think I was trying to take a lot of boxes every single day. Yeah. Um, and actually it stopped me from enjoying so much of it because I think every time I wasn't really very present wherever I was because I was always trying to make sure all the other things got done. Yeah. And I feel I've learned gently, slowly, still learning to take a little bit more of a step back and accept that, as you said, some days you're going to do a really good job of work and parenting and some days you're not and that's okay. Yeah. Um, life throws all sorts of weird and wonderful things at you um, and it's okay to ebb and flow. Yeah. Um, and I think in my earlier days of parenting and obviously I'm still learning so much, I really felt like I had to get it right all the time and ultimately you don't and mm -hmm. so then you keep feeling like you're not good enough and like you're not doing a good enough job. I, yeah, I wish someone would tell you that before you even become a parent. As you, I had one person say to me when I remember being in drama school and uh, one of my tutors was uh, a mum, a mum of two. I remember just casually one day she said, you feel guilty from the moment you fall pregnant and it never stops. And I, that's still stuck in my head. I'm like, oh, that, that's so true. Whether you're doing something or not, you're always going to feel guilty. A hundred percent. I think that is really innate in us mm. because you can't be in two places. You can't get it all right. And I think that's where... I'm trying to learn that sense of self-compassion of just yeah. realizing, as I said, some days you are going to get the balance right and some weeks you're not. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, do you know what? My mother-in-law had a really busy career. She was a politician. She had two children, my husband and his sister. And they, she worked so hard and they always felt she was there. They never felt she missed anything in their life even though she was at work so much of the time. And that has been a really nice... I've tried yeah. to really embody that in myself, which is that... Um, you know, being there when it matters to them and being there whenever you can is so important, but they could still think you're a great mum if you weren't there 24 seven. Yeah. Have you talked to her about how she achieved that? No, she passed away oh. just before my first daughter was born. Oh. Um, so, which I wish I, I could take a deeper dive into. So yeah. I only get it through through my husband really, but I, I still stick with that. It's like, yeah. it is possible, that's my, that's my model. It's funny, like my my dad worked all hours, got sent. He, he used to run a calf, so very different. But he was leaving at three o'clock in the morning, you know, back quite late. When he got home, he was asleep, you know. But I, he was such a massive part of my childhood and I have great memories. So I think sometimes we have this thing of we need to be there 24-7 when actually 
we don't to have that to have that bond and to be that influence in someone's life no exactly and I think it's the same I used to feel like you had to do loads of activities and you had to do lots of things and actually more and more I'm like no it's okay we can just be together Mm. they can play I can read a book like that we don't have to be on all the time yeah there's something that I do where say they want they want to watch Mr Bean the cartoon I'm like great you can watch an episode and then I'll run around the kitchen and do some tidying up but what I've learned to do is sit down with them because that's the time that they want to snuggle and that's you know it's actually such a nice thing to be able to be in that with them rather than going off and using the time to tidy up which they won't notice at all a hundred percent you know what I really reflected on it so when my first daughter Sky was born So she was born in the summer 2019. Um, I was so overwhelmed when she was born. I was so anxious. I had really intrusive thoughts, but I didn't really know what to do with it. So I didn't really express it. We had to go back to work after four weeks, which was really, obviously, really challenging. And what I noticed was that my husband would come home and it doesn't matter what had been going on that day. It doesn't matter how busy he was. He would come home. He was obsessed with skin to skin. He would literally just like take off his chair, lie in the bed with her on his Um, chest and they would just sleep together and they would spend even though he was working so hard they spent hours and hours of time together and whenever he wasn't working he would just chill with her whereas exactly that I feel Mm. like I missed that completely I didn't really do any of that with her because I felt exactly I had to tick all the boxes Mm -hmm. had to tidy up I had to sort this I had to book the injections I had to reply to this email I had to send those whatsapps and I was always go 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 yeah um and as a result, I never, I don't feel, I feel I miss so much of her first six months or so because I was not present at all. I was yeah. like, what have I got to do? What have I got to do? How do I take the box of being a good mum, essentially, and keep on top of life? I can remember a friend of mine saying to me, isn't it lovely? And and I, I think it must have been with Buzz. He was already kind of, well, he wasn't a year. It mean, must have been a year. But she said to me, you know, isn't it just lovely when they fall asleep on you? And be like, oh, I haven't done that because... The book said, <laughs> I need to do this, 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 and this. And so I was like, I haven't done it. And you realise that actually that there's such a small window where they are that age and they are that size. And, um, yeah, I, I so I, I did start doing that. And I think it was only my third, really, that I I, I allowed myself to, to properly be there and block out everything else. Yeah, I did it so much more second time around. Yeah. And it was amazing. It was such an amazing experience. I feel so lucky for that. But it's, um, and I think that's all fed into just trying to let go a little bit of the tick boxing because you just miss so much. Mm. What was your childhood like? Um, Complicated. Okay. Yeah. And I'm really conscious of that, you know, so much of of life isn't isn't your story to tell. Um, And certainly that's how I feel with a lot of it. but obviously, like anyone, has good bits. But it it was, especially in retrospect, extraordinarily complicated and quite charged right. and quite difficult to navigate. Um, so, do you feel like you were aware of that as a child? Um, yes and no. Um, it was very. It clearly had an impact on me, and um, I was I was really unhappy, um, and was for a very very long time had very low self esteem. But I think it took me a long time to kind of, yeah, recognise what's normal, what kind of family dynamics I would want Mm -hmm. or would want to model for my children. Um, And it was really meeting, yeah, my husband and his family who had a very simple relationship between the four of them with his parents and his sister. That was quite a mirror to actually quite how complicated it has been. Mm -hmm. Um, And actually, as a result, how complicated I think I was in so many ways. Um, which was quite confronting. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever look ahead to your future and see a, see yourself as a mum? Was that something that you wanted even though family life was complicated? Um, it wasn't something I wanted or didn't want. Mm-hmm. I hadn't spent very much time thinking about it, um, nor had I spent much time thinking about getting married. I actually yeah. didn't think I probably ever did want to get married, which is quite funny because I got married at 24, so I got married <laughs> so young, yeah. um, and before anyone else I knew. Um, so, uh, which you probably therefore would have assumed I was quite fixated on getting yeah. married because it's very, very young to do that nowadays. Um, but yeah, so when I met my husband, I told him, you know, I, I don't think I ever want to get married. You know, I had never really thought about having children. I didn't think about not having them, but yeah. it wasn't this like massive fixation or focus um 
And so it was really interesting. And then I met him. And after a week, I was like, yeah, I'd marry him. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Within a week, a week after our first date, we moved in together. Three months later, he'd quit his job to work together. So we'd been working together our whole relationship. We'd got a dog. Then we were engaged um, and we were married within within a year. Oh, my yeah. god! So in retrospect, mad. Like if it was my kid, I would not. You know, you'd want to be supportive but equally. You're like, you're 23. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got a dog. You <laughs> Now he's got his job and you're starting a business together. Is this a great idea? Yeah. At what point did you meet his family? Um, well, we actually met through our parents. So my dad used to work with his mum. Right. And um, Delicious Yellow had just taken off. My first book had just come out. And he was working on a... Um, farming project in Sierra Leone I mean so we're quite random at this point um they had been hit really badly by Ebola right. and um the original plans of what they were doing out there so they were really interested in their farms and the ingredients that they were growing and what could they do with them and he read an interview that I had done in the Sunday Times after my book had come out and thought oh well maybe we could work with her and she could create something with our ingredients and we could sell it as a snack bar yeah and he realized that he knew my dad and so he sent him an email um because he'd met him through his mum and I had just broken up with my boyfriend of four years or so right. and my dad sent me a message being like this is the guy for you <laughs> I was like I'm not interested <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was really enjoying being single. I was yeah. having this really exciting moment of my career. I didn't really want to be match made by my dad, yeah. particularly. Um, that feels quite old school. It was really, oh yeah, it's a full arranged marriage yeah. at, at 24. It's an unusual setup. Um, my dad's like, what's happening with photos of him? It was quite weird. Um, but we met and then I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to see him again because that's the kind of person that you marry. And I, I don't really want to go near that at the yeah. moment. And then, as I said, yeah, on our on our third date, we moved in together and, and that was that. I mean, that's wild. And, and especially because people always think, oh, you must be like a real romantic. And actually, it was like the absolute opposite kind of... Do you not think that's romantic? No, it is really romantic. Yeah. Well, no, what I mean, sorry, is that people would assume that I was like you a real weren't. romantic, that you would, oh, yeah, you would yeah, really yeah. believe in love at first sight yeah. and being like swept off your feet, whereas I'd gone into this like... Heart of stone, <laughs> like I mean, not a romantic. Know. This this is ideal, like book territory. You yeah, know, girl who's kind of anti-marriage meets the guy and sweep, he sweeps her off. That, this is yeah. like that is... moves in with them after a week. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and on the business side, I mean, yeah. it worked marriage-wise and business-wise. Yeah, so we're nine years in, and and it all good. Um, so all's well that ends well. Can you remember when you started thinking about children? Well, we originally, we after we got married, so that was 2016, so a year after we met, we were like, let's have kids. Because I, I always say it's first, so we're all or nothing. I just love this fact as well, that you're a bit like, childhood was complicated. I don't really know, you know, I'm going to be a lone wolf growing through life. Yeah. And all of a sudden, it's kind of like you're fully in. Fully in, literally. And excited about it. Oh, you know so I mean? excited. Like, couldn't have been happier if I tried. Um, and we thought about it, but actually, like, work was really busy, yeah. and I'm so glad that we didn't, like, actually do anything with those thoughts because we were just not ready. Right. And then I think we consistently felt we weren't ready, and work was so busy, you know, startup mode, where you're kind of 18 hours a day, seven days a week, yeah. 52 weeks a year. And so it just felt, how on earth would you ever fit a baby into this? Um, and then in 2017, um, my mother-in-law was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. And that was our kind of marker, really, of thinking just... And it really happened within, like, minutes. Everything right. was fine. She was in such good health. And then um, I was actually in the US with work. And my husband had gone away for a few days with his friends in Scotland playing golf. And literally the second he arrived at the hotel they were staying at, he got a call um, from the police who his mum had had a big seizure um, when she was out and about. Um, and anyway, so at that point, we didn't know if she was OK, um, like she make it through the night. So I got on an overnight flight back to, from New York, not really knowing what I'd land back to. And then over the next few days, we found out that she had a terminal brain cancer and that she she had less than a, a year's life expectancy from that. Um which obviously turns everything upside mm -hmm. down and priorities obviously completely shift. And I think it was that sense of like, 
you know, life, it, the only certainty in life is uncertainty. And we all know that. But I think sometimes you have those really concrete reminders where actually we don't even know what's going to happen one minute from now. You yeah. do only have this moment. Um, and so actually, like, there will never be a good time. Yeah. How do you, you know, we could put it off forever. You know, when you're growing your own business, like, it's it's so uncertain. Things are always changing. And if we try to kind of plan it um yeah it was it was never going to work and mm. so um we thought about it but actually as in when after she'd been diagnosed and and then obviously our child would be able to meet her but actually we felt like it was going to be such a difficult period mm. and everyone needed to be just really present to support her and um my father-in-law and actually you know not adding necessarily any more dynamics into it but after she passed away she had grown up in Scotland and spent a lot of time on the west coast of Scotland and the Isle of Skye was her favourite place. And so the day after her funeral, we went up there together with my father-in-law and my sister-in-law. And when we were there, we were like, you know what, this is the right time. And if it's a girl, we'll call her Skye. No. And so, yeah, so then we had Skye. That's incredible. Um, I think it's such a, I want to say sad in, in terms of, it's sad that it takes something like death for us all to live exactly but it, it was that prompt it definitely mm. was of like we could put this off forever and ever and ever yeah um and life was so busy and so topsy-turvy um but actually you know we have no idea what what the future holds so so why do that yeah absolutely. so she was yeah born summer 2019 So you literally started trying from the moment on Sky? No, a few months later, but then, and I know we're really lucky with this, but we we just thought like, look, we're not going to really try. Yeah. We're just not going to not try. And yeah. we're going to see what happens. Um, we're not going to plan, basically. And we'll get pregnant at some point, hopefully. Um, and that would be brilliant. And then we were pregnant that week. <laughs> so that was quite uh, <laughs> overwhelming. <laughs> And I know I'm really lucky, but also I was like, oh my gosh, okay, this works. <laughs> <laughs> because you spend your whole life going, mustn't get pregnant, mustn't exactly. get pregnant, mustn't get pregnant. And, um, and then suddenly you were like, oh, okay. So I called my mum and I was like, um, when you were pregnant, did you have any like funny symptoms? And I was, I was like, I don't, because I felt so ill almost immediately, like right. about 10 days before I could even take a test. Right. So I thought either I'm actually really ill and I should go to the hospital yeah. or I'm pregnant and I, I'm feeling it really early. And I'd had a lot of complications with my health in the past. So I guess it's not, my body is very sensitive. So it's not that surprising in some ways. But um, and my mum was like, why are you thinking about getting pregnant? I was like, oh, I think maybe I am pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was like, take a test. I was like, no, no, I can't. It was, it's so early. But anyway, so we found out. And we found out my husband's birthday. So it was all quite oh. like, um, yeah, full full circle. And Because um, of everything that happened with your health previously, which led yeah. to you creating Delicious Viella, were you worried in terms of fertility, whether things would take a while? Um, I was less worried about fertility and more worried about symptoms coming yeah. back and, okay. um, and kind of, yeah, regressing in, in my health. And... Um, but weirdly, my first pregnancy was awful. Um, really? It was just, particularly the first, about 16 weeks, I felt, I went back to the real sense of chronic fatigue I'd had when I was ill, where the idea of lifting up your arm mm -hmm. feels difficult, like an exhaustion that's kind of in your bones. Um, and a lot of nausea as well, but it was the extreme exhaustion, whereas I said it was like it didn't, you could have slept all day, wouldn't have made any difference whatsoever. Really? The idea of like standing up and walking into the toilet was just overwhelmingly exhausting. Um, and I How did- How did you manage that? I found it really, really difficult. Um, and in retrospect, I would do it differently. I would just, I would be honest about people, but there's this whole taboo, like don't tell anyone you're pregnant. Don't mm -hmm. tell anyone you're pregnant. And actually I told everyone I was pregnant the second time around because really? I'm such an open book. Um, I hate not being completely transparent yeah. and probably an oversharer to say the least. Um, and I like being close with the people I spend time with and the people mm. I work with. And so I found it really strange. I just felt like I was lying to everyone all mm. day and doing a really bad job of everything um, without any explanation. And people obviously would be so much more understanding about 
you missing every deadline. And also I was meant to be handing in a cookbook and I couldn't even look at a vegetable without retching. No. <laughs> so it was very off brand. So off brand. <laughs> so off brand. <laughs> yeah, no, I literally. You must have been like, of all the things. I know. It's so off brand. Can't look at baked beans and be like that. Or... Yeah, no, honestly, I remember like opening the fridge and being like, come on, it's been like a month without a vegetable look at this broccoli out do something with it and I literally got looked at the broccoli and started rat check and I was like so okay. are you telling me that during that time did you go onto a beige diet a fully diet? beige 100% beige really yeah. yeah yeah only beige yeah whereas with my second pregnancy nothing didn't know I was pregnant and do you feel like in those? I mean, you, sometimes you just got no choice. Like no. if you're, you're going to retch when you see a broccoli, don't eat you broccoli. Have to go for the, you have to go for the beige. Exactly, a hundred percent. And it got much better by about sixteen weeks in. What kind um, of beige food were you eating? Come on, let's go. Potatoes on every way. <laughs> <laughs> that was every really way. my thing. Like mashed, <laughs> roasted, um, crisps, chips. Like just all baked potatoes, all the potatoes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It was a delicious <laughs> meal. My thing that I got real craving for though, which is really. Cool, Gross yeah. in retrospect was really, really, really lemony chips, but not like, not, you know, like putting a little bit of vinegar on your chips, yeah. like a portion of chips with two lemons over them, like just really salty as well. Disgusting. <laughs> you oh know, my God. Yeah. I remember being in a restaurant with my husband and, and his dad and being like, and it was an Italian restaurant and they had ordered some pasta and I had ordered really plain pasta because I was like, I think that's all I can cope with. Yeah. And then I was like, I can't even eat this. And I was like, no. do you have any chips? And they were like, on the kids menu, I was like, great, can I just have a couple of portions <laughs> of that with some lemons? I was so <laughs> embarrassed. Did part of you go, this might change the shape of cookbooks to come? Yeah, exactly. Here's a <laughs> hundred yeah, ways <laughs> to eat chips with lemon. <laughs> you don't want to make any of these. Zero stars on Amazon. Um, yeah, I, it was it was really gross. Did you have any symptoms second time around? None. Yeah, none at all. And had you decided, like, now start? Because I always find this really fascinating, going from one to two, when you make that leap. Uh, like, my third was a nice surprise for us. But one to two for us, I was like, well, I can remember Buzz being nine months old and being like, blimey, people that have had 18 months between them, the siblings that we know, the friends that we know, that means they did it now. Like, how would we do it now? <laughs> like, it blew my mind. Yeah, well, we've got 14 months. Gaps. Yes, I know. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, it was it was honestly similar to the first time round where we were yeah. like, we can't plan anything in our life. Yeah. It's Everything is so different every single day. So let's not. Yeah. And let's just see what happens. But again, it was, I just, I just didn't think I was pregnant. And I was with, I'd gone away with my mum uh, my mum had actually tried to go away on a romantic boy, a trip with her partner, which she was then crashed because they'd rented this house by me my, with a baby, my brother with a baby, um, <laughs> and then one of my girlfriends. So I'm not sure her partner was too impressed. But we went on this this like sort of semi-family trip. And when I was there, I was talking to my friend. And I was like, it's weird, you know, after you have a baby and your periods are just like so regular. And she's like, well, maybe you're actually pregnant. I was like, no, <laughs> it's not possible. <laughs> so I was, I was quite... Um, I was quite overwhelmed initially yeah. at the idea of it um, because Guy was only a couple of months old at this point. But actually, it has been phenomenal mm. and I would um, wholeheartedly recommend the tiny age gap. It's really difficult to start with. I mean, obviously, the first like six months or so because the older one can't do anything by themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, they can't feed themselves. They can't even like competently walk up the stairs get yeah. themselves dressed even if it's back to front you know they can't do can't put their shoes on they can't do anything by themselves really at 14 months they can't even talk um so you do have two infants basically so it, i think it's probably quite similar in a way to twins but yeah. obviously at different developmental stages um but then as they got a little bit bigger they are now just complete soul sisters they're obsessed Aww. with each other they sleep together, they want to do everything together. And because they're the same age, it is not easy, but what one, th one of them wants to do, the other one wants to do. So every single birthday party, the other one is so excited to go to it um, and things like that. So it makes, it makes it quite easy, actually, when one has a play date, the other one can go to and they can all play together. And, um, and that has just like logistically been yeah. kind of brilliant, but they have this, it like, feels like this like inbuilt, little best friend so and they 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 are obsessed with each other obviously five percent of the time they like bite and kick course, and hit yeah. each other just like to caveat of course <laughs> um but actually yeah they they adore each other 
How were the rest of your pregnancies after after your severe, you know, <laughs> severeness, I guess, for the first? Yeah. And your easiness, I guess, for the second. How the second one was really easy until the end. Right. And then I had something called prodromal labour, where you have That's contractions right. every day for almost five weeks, <gasps> um, which was a real experience. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. My mum had it, funny enough, with my sister, who is her fourth. I'm one of four. And um, so, but she didn't know what it was. And she eventually, after about two weeks, was like, went in and was like, please induce me. I think I'm going to give birth on the floor on the school run. Right. Um, and um, so she, she did that. But um, luckily, I, the midwife said that I think this is what it is because it started just before 36 weeks. The baby was kind of fully engaged. I mean, she was born in an hour. So she was right there and ready to go. <laughs> um, and for three or four hours every single day, you have contractions. And so I felt like I was going mad really um, well, did you know that it wasn't it though? no because that you do after a minute because they don't they don't change right it's it starts at a level right and it starts a bit higher you know normally it starts low and it gets it builds yeah. right whereas with this it doesn't start quite as low i mean i remember with my first contractions first around you're like is that a contraction and then after like half an hour you're like oh it definitely yeah. is and then an hour later you're like oh yep <laughs> <laughs> um and it doesn't do that that kind of like more of a linear line it was yeah. just like would start at say a three or a four and and stay there for three or four hours so you know quite quickly it's not progressing okay but you can't do much while it's happening and i became quite nervous because she was so engaged and the midwife was like honestly if you now go into labor which you obviously could do any second she could be born in 20 minutes half an hour like she is right there <laughs> um, and um and so I was really nervous of so obviously, doing anything kind of four weeks you know yeah. I know I know that you don't know when the baby's gonna arrive but to know that kind of like this is us until she does come I know it was so strange and so like and also with what we do, we, we make food products. And so my husband works, we work with loads of different manufacturers up and down the country. So yeah. he would say like, but I, you know, it's a six week period. Like it's quite difficult to say you can't do your work. You can't get on a train three hours away yeah. for these really important things because I could give birth at any second of any day. And obviously that's that's always the case, but not necessarily to the point where the baby feels like it's just going to pop out on the street. <laughs> um, so it was such a strange mindset um, shift and experience and trying to like surrender to it yeah. when actually you feel like you're going a bit mad. Yeah. Um, so that was really interesting. So when you did go into labor, yeah. did that feel instantly differently? No, instantly not different. instantly. Um, and actually, funny enough, having for almost five weeks being like, please just be the real deal. Yeah. Like, let's go now. I can't I can't do this anymore. Then my sky was ill. My husband was coldy. And I was like, just don't come. You know what? Like, don't <laughs> come today. Like, we've been playing this game for a long time now. If you could just stay in for a couple of days, so everyone's better. That would now be good. Um, and sky was a few weeks early and I was already at about 41 weeks at this right. point. So I was like, you can just stay in, OK? Just, just chill. <laughs> and... Um, and then he'd gone to sleep and I was watching David Attenborough and I was like, oh, yeah. That. And it was a gentler contraction than those right. had been. So I was like, oh, maybe. So I texted our um, midwife who we were doing a home birth and I was like, oh, I think that might be a, a might be real. And she was like, mm, I don't think she believed me. And after like 20 minutes, I was like, oh, I think that's might be. And so I woke I woke my husband up and, and yeah, she was born just over an hour later. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah it was really, really sudden. Had you had a home birth with the first? Birth? Yeah. What, what led you to go down the home birth route? Um, and look, I'll just caveat this whole conversation. I know parenting is a whole world of opinions and thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. And but this is what's right for you. Exactly. And I had never obviously heard good things about birth, as I think most women yeah. is their experience. My mum hadn't had bad births, um, like no tra like traumatic stories, but certainly didn't enjoy birth. Mm. And then when I got pregnant... Um, I, I put it on Instagram at, at 12 weeks with Sky and I had all these messages from these women saying giving birth was the best day of my life not because of the baby as in that was amazing but it was the most empowering day of my life birth was the most extraordinary experience I've ever had I loved giving birth and I was like Sorry, what, what is this? this? What is this trickery? This is a very different linear they're very different line of conversation than I've ever heard in my life Yeah. Um, and 
there was this common thread, which was this hypnobirthing mm -hmm. and a kind of real focus on mindfulness. And initially I thought, I think as a lot of people do, like surely you can't just like breathe a baby out. And But I went and did this hypnobirthing course and it was really interesting because it was so focused on the physiology mm -hmm. of birth and the hormones that you need and the idea that it's really difficult to have lots of oxytocin when you're feeling really nervous and you've got loads of adrenaline and those two are antagonistic to each yeah. other. And this idea that like, um, just how all the sort of, yeah, um, steps of birth work and that your body is looking for you to be calm, essentially yeah. produce loads of oxytocin, et cetera, for the process to work. And the more I thought about that, and I think also because I, I had been very unwell and I'd spent a lot of time in and out of hospital in my early 20s, I probably felt more nervous in hospital yeah. than maybe other people do. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, some people feel much safer there. It was, it whenever I step in there, I feel uncomfortable and I yeah. feel nervous. Um, and so I started to to learn as much as I could about this idea. And so it was less about breathing the baby out as to much as understanding what's going on in your body and trying to lean into those natural processes as much as possible. And I just thought it was so interesting. And um, so I, my husband was not completely sure. And then the more we read about it, like there's, you know, particularly because of the NHS focused on it more for a second time around, yeah. but the stats around home births are amazing, actually, if you've got an uncomplicated pregnancy. Yeah. Um, and so I just felt that was the right thing to do for us. Yeah. And I have to say, both such different experiences, um, Sky was n not long for a first child, but I think about 12, 13 hours from first um, contraction to the end. And hers was actually, um, my water's broke and I woke up and I was like, oh my gosh, am I wet in the bed? <laughs> um, but I, I yeah. love that even, like, that's the first thought. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I was like, why am I lying in a massive <laughs> wet patch? Because um, it's not out of the, out of the like, realms of possibility. No, exactly. When you've got a massive baby belt. Exactly. Be and we, she was a couple of weeks early and we were meant to be going to an old friend of mine's wedding in Oxford ah. that day. And so luckily it didn't happen like on the train or anything yeah. on the way there. But um so, and that was a bit weird, therefore, because then every all my friends knew I was in labour because obviously I didn't go. Yeah. Um, so everyone was like, how's it going? <laughs> it's fine, thanks. <laughs> Working hard over here. Um, but um, uh, it was it was so intense, obviously, as, as birth is. But it was a really empowering experience. Like, I did feel so amazing after mm. it. And I did... I, I don't know if I would say enjoy it, but I did. I'm glad I had the experience. Yeah. Um, and it was, as I said, a really empowering, strengthening experience. Yeah. Because it goes, you go, it takes you so far beyond what you think your mental and your physical limits. Yeah. I'm sure it's how people feel when they run a, you know, an ultra marathon or, you know, these extraordinary, or an Ironman, these things that feel beyond mm. normal physical abilities. And I think that's how I felt at the end of it. Like, just so proud yeah. to, have, to have done that. I feel like looking back, I, I was talking about it the other day to someone, it's like time when you're in labour just disappears. Gone. Although I didn't feel that in the second one because oh, it really? was just so fast that I actually was more overwhelmed almost second time around because the first time around felt natural. Like it yeah. made sense. It built um, the f last couple of hours were really difficult, but it felt I, I kind of got it. And it was like your body was, you know, doing its thing. Whereas the second time around, it was just so fast. I was like, oh, my God. So my coming. second was the same. I I would describe mine as almost animalistic in the sense that it felt like my body expelled him. That was it. Exactly. And he had bloodshot eyes for the first month because he came out so fast. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it was exactly that. It's like your body took over. Yep. First time around, I feel like my body and my brain was like working together a little yeah, bit more. Yeah. And the second time around, it was exactly that. It was like, you have no control. Mm -hmm. And that was really overwhelming, actually. And I was like, oh, my God, keep it inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. <laughs> I remember sort of saying that in the midwife. I was like, no, no, don't, 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 don't try and don't try and do that. <laughs> Can't suck it back in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, definitely different. And then with Sky, the first time around, um, the midwife was like, keep pushing. And I was like, no, she's out. She came out all in one go. And after like two and a half hours of pushing in one, she just 
wow. suddenly. And so she like expelled into the water because I had like a blow up paddling pool in our guest room. And um, my husband was like, is this an on-brand birth? <laughs> it's all wellness vibes, like yeah. yoga music, we had coconut water. Um, but yeah, she like, and then we, I, you could, I kind of lost her for a second, like a slippery soap yeah, bar in the bar. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, where's the baby? <laughs> I know she's out. The was like, keep going. I was like, she's out. We just don't know where she is. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and obviously it was probably only one second. Yeah, um, but yeah. still, it was just like very strange. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, two two very different experiences in some way, but would yeah, I think it's not for everyone having them at home, but it is a really amazing. Well, how was thing. that afterwards? Because I know the midwife will then clean everything up, so it's not like anything's nothing's happened. Yeah. What was it like then getting into into your own bed? I mean, that was the bit that made me be like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy to be at home. Yeah, to just like get into your own things in your own bed have your food yeah. um so nice yeah so so nice i love that um ella there's one thing that i couldn't have you on without talking about and that's obviously food yeah cool. firstly your your latest book what is it called healthy made simple healthy made simple this has been out since january, january so i'm saying yeah, it's a new yeah. book it's the it's the new-ish. latest newish when it comes to um creating recipes and stuff now are, are your kids inspiring new recipes they definitely inspired a new way of looking at food, which yeah. was the prompt of a healthy meal. Nice simple. and quickly, yeah. Quickly. Because yeah. ultimately, and it was finding that balance between like flavour, nutrition and ease. Because ultimately, for most people, you don't just have to be a parent, obviously, for that to be the case. We're just so short on time. Yeah. And it's all about how do we make people's life? How can we make healthy habits a bit simpler? It's the same with all the products we do. We know people love cooking from scratch. You don't have time to do that three meals yeah. a day, every snack every day. Uh -huh. So can we give you some shortcuts? Um, and so definitely being a parent has really heightened that focus on how can we do things and actually just highlighting like a carrot is wellness, lentils are wellness. You don't yeah. need to do like cold water swimming if you want to that's amazing but to feel like these things are kind of a prerequisite to good yeah. health I think that's what I'm trying to move away from and focus mm -hmm. as I said instead of daily walk five minutes of breathing make a veggie stir fry these simple everyday habits um, and that was definitely prompted by kids but obviously yeah. cooking for kids is a, a minefield uh, was it something that you were excited about um, yes, and then I had a very disappointing start. <laughs> um, what did you go with? What did you lead with? Um, I led with a baby porridge, which she literally threw across the room. <laughs> um, so it was very interesting. She basically didn't, Sky basically didn't eat till she was almost one. Really? And it was so stressful. I remember being in like the baby NCT WhatsApp and people were like, oh my gosh, my baby's eating three bowls of porridge every morning. I'm like, mine won't eat anything. And she wouldn't do anything till she could do it herself. So <laughs> I didn't intend to do baby led weaning as I had like extreme anxiety at this point. The idea of that made me feel really overwhelmed and anxious. Yeah. I was obsessed with choking and all the rest of it. Um, but she wouldn't let me feed anything off a spoon. So as a result, she didn't really eat anything till she was almost one because she couldn't, you know, you kind of chew she on it for two minutes. And, but, yeah. you know, by the time you were able to do that, um, so that was quite nerve wracking. Yeah. Uh, but again, a good lesson in like they figure it all out in time by themselves. And she now eats really well. And, you know, she's she's great. And yeah. that was just her path to it. Um, but yeah, that she wouldn't eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. That must have been so disappointing. Oh my gosh, it was so disappointing. I was like, had the camera ready. I was like, this is the big day. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to try it. Avocado, yuck, banana, yuck, because she just wouldn't have anything from us. Especially so since so much focus for you. People must have been like, they must have big expectations for you as a mum. Oh, for sure, to... exactly. And I'm like, not meeting though. <laughs> Um, so that was interesting and obviously like you know you work really hard you make something and then they're yeah. like I don't like it um, and then the next day like this is my favourite mummy and I'm like yesterday you said you hated it <laughs> oh we always tell it the other way around where they love something the first time yeah. and the second time they're like this is disgusting I'm like well, you ate it last week I know how it's mind boggling isn't it yeah yeah so I always just have like a w easy wins like I make lots of things like frozen smoothie lollies right um, which is so easy because you can chuck in lots of good ingredients in there nuts seeds yeah. fruits etc and they love that sort yeah. of thing and I'm like yes they're having loads of fruit and veg and fiber and stuff. They um, just don't know it. They just don't know it. You can like freeze cauliflower and blend it in. You can't taste it. it actually makes it really creamy. Um, ah. They'd never eat cauliflower otherwise. 
Um, but you can just put it in there with banana, with fruit. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you genuinely can't actually taste it or a bit of spinach. And so it's these like easy things. I make massive um, veggie bolognese's or like yeah. um, five bean chili type things. And you can just chuck in any vegetable you have but they can't really see them, so they won't object. Whereas sometimes they'll like roast broccoli and then the next day, exactly, they'll be like, gross, hate this. This is not my favourite. Yeah. I I feel a sense of relief that it also happens to you. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, no. (laughs) Oh, for sure. (laughs) For sure. Um, Yeah, no, we obviously, like, it ebbs and it flows. But I think, isn't it, you know, look, I'm only five years into this. I've got so much more to learn, but I think that is my number one learning of, like, it's just it does ebb and it flows and it changes and you just slightly have to trust the process yeah. that what's difficult this week probably won't be difficult in time and then something else will be difficult and then that will ease and you just slightly have to trust the process and I think that's really hard to do to start with like yeah. it's really hard to trust okay why are all other babies eating and she's not yet and now I look at her and she's five and it couldn't be less of a problem if we tried yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so it is that kind of cyclical thing Mm -hmm. isn't it and it's trying to relax into that which is a very difficult thing to do yeah absolutely are yours constantly asking for snacks yes yeah good to know yeah yeah constantly 100 (laughs) percent. if you could write a letter on motherhood who would it be to and what would you say gosh what a question do you know what i think i'd write it i think i'd love to write to my sisters because oh. they're younger, they don't have children. And I think I'd like to, it's exactly what everything we've talked about and everything you do, obviously, on this show is that sense of like quite how overwhelming it is mm. to begin with, how difficult most people find those early days, how much you stop trusting yourself at yeah. points, how much you're kind of comparing to other people, you're trying to do something and it's all so new and so overwhelming. But this idea that it does, as we were saying, like it does all slightly gently start to, ease out and that's not to say there aren't challenges but it's not quite so overwhelming and I think there is that just trying to give people permission to enjoy it and not be so hard on themselves and find a bit more Mm. self-compassion because it can be just so extraordinarily overwhelming. For me especially those early days where it feels so raw and messy and you know I think especially first time around because it's all so new you know, you don't recognise yourself. No. This little person is, you know, although you've grown them, they're alien to you. They don't, you don't know what their cries are. And you are don't know what to do with them. No. You know, how do I feed? What does, you said, yeah. what does this mean? What do they need? And I'm just being like, just tell me what you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, obviously you can't go and do that. But also it's the fact that that, that that baby comes into your life when you are at your like, like weakest. Yeah. Physically and mentally and emotionally. You've not slept and, you know, you've, your body's done such a massive thing. Exactly. And it is, it's it's terrifying. Yeah. Um, but then it's, you know, you're all nervous to say it's terrifying because you don't want to sound ungrateful yeah. and unappreciative. Um, so it is an interesting balance. And I think that's always the case in motherhood in some mm-hmm. ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would like you to complete three sentences for me. Okay. So the first one is being a mum means. It's everything, really. Uh, yeah, everything. It is my whole world. Since having children, I... I'm a lot more self-compassionate and slower. I love that. And I'm happy when? Uh, All family. Yeah, with my whole family. Yeah. And I think as my husband and I are so obsessed with that, that's now what the girls say. Like whenever I'm like, what's made? We try and do like gratitudes and things like that. And uh, so what's made you happy say? Being with my mummy, my daddy, and my sister, and my doggy. Oh, I know. And even if we haven't already been together that day, it's so sweet. That's so lovely. I know. I love that. Um, yeah, we do. We spend so much time just the four of us. Yeah, like obsessively. And it also makes that the time where you've had to work, you know, all hours. Yeah, it makes it really worthwhile now. Oh, a hundred percent. Enjoy it. it exactly. Yeah. Ella, thank you so much. I've loved this chat. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Not at all. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.